Hey everyone, welcome back. This is my review of The Legend of Korra, Book 2, Spirit, Episode 2, entitled Rebel Spirit. Or Episode 1, I mean, entitled, Re entitled Rebel Spirit. So, yeah, once again, I'm sorry that this video is out late. I I honestly forgot to start doing this, the, the series of The Legend of Korra. I'm sorry. Alright. Anyways. Six months after the end of Book One Air, Korra believes that she has mastered airbending. Mako works as a policeman. Bolin fares poorly in pro bending with the new fire ferrets, and Asami tries to keep future industries aloft. You know, because in the last season, her father kind kind of went all douchebag on everyone, including her. Especially her. With Tenzin and his brother Bumi, now re retired from the m military, the, fr the friends visit Korra's and Tenzin's family in the, s in the Southern Water Tribe. They reunite with Tenzin's mother, Keitara, and his sister, Kia, as well as Korra's parents, Tonrak and Senna. Also arriving for the Sol Solstice Festival is the Northern Water Tribe's chief Naf the the douchebag guy. I'm just gonna call him that. And his twin children Den Desna and Eska. Douchebag guy criticizes the Southern Water Tribe's loss of spirituality and seeks to tutor Korra in the ways of the spirits. Meanwhile, Asami sets up a business deal with the economic shipping magnet and movie producer Varric and, and Eska adopts Bolin as her boyfriend. Yeah, adopt. Keep that in mind. Adopts him as her boyfriend. After an angry spirit attacks the festival, Korra tries to fight it off, but to no avail. It, it, and it is insta instantly calmed by Douchebag Guy. Despite her father's warnings, Korra chooses Douchebag Guy instead of Tenzin as her spiritual teacher. And that ends the chapter of this episode. Um, basically... Yeah, this is part of the pilot. The pilot technically consisted of the, fir consisted of the first two episodes. You know what that sounds like. Consists of the first two episodes, but I'm... In as if they were one episode, but I'm in counting them as two because they actually are okay, technically speaking. So yeah, what I think of this episode in the end, well, it was very a very simple start, I thought, and... The reason I, uh, refer to Douchebag Guy as Douchebag Guy instead of his actual name, because I can't, well, for two reasons, one, I can't pronounce his name, but the reason I chose specifically Douchebag Guy is because he seems like kind of a douchebag, <laughs> as if that wasn't obvious enough, and I honestly think he's going to turn out to be a villain later on. Kind of like, you know, I didn't, I didn't really predict that Tarlock would in the, in, in season one immediately, but I kind of, over the course of the series, kind of started to assume that and it turned out to be true. Now I'm assuming it immediately. That's kind of sad. But, uh, who knows? I may be wrong. I might be wrong. Who knows? I, I especially think it's kind of odd with her relationship with her father. The core's relationship with her father because it's like they haven't seen each other in so fucking long. So many fucking years. And they're already at each, other, at each other's throat. I just think that's kind of weird. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. So yes. So basically, we have that, um, and that, and that what, right there was kind of a problem I had with this episode. Overall, it was entertaining. It wasn't anything that was great, but it got the job done at to basically start out the series, and I did enjoy it. So yeah. Anyways, next time will be my review of episode two, which will be the end of the pilot, basically. So yeah. Anyways, overall, hope you enjoyed this 
review guys. He's after guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.